Coronavirus has hit the most deprived parts of England and Wales twice as hard as wealthier areas, according to official figures. Urban regions, which are more densely populated, were also worse affected than rural areas. Meanwhile, in the last 24-hour period, the number of deaths reported in the UK in hospitals, care homes and the wider community related to coronavirus were up by 202, bringing the total number of deaths to 41,481. Our health editor, Hugh Pym, reports. Big cities with big populations. The virus spread fast with a higher risk of deaths, one message underlined by today's new data. Richard Musa worked as a nurse in London for 26 years. He died in hospital with COVID-19 and his family couldn't give him a final farewell. COVID and the rules around it made it extremely difficult for us as a family and it added to our grief. So it, it felt like grief upon grief that we couldn't see him, we couldn't be near him, we couldn't see him before he was buried, all of the things that we would have wanted to do that proper goodbye. We were denied that opportunity and it's really, really difficult. The northeast of England has been hit hard by coronavirus. Following the peak in April, the number of deaths fell across the country last month, but slower in this region than elsewhere. And local health experts say there were a number of factors. As a GP in inner city Newcastle, we have large numbers of people living with uh, long-term conditions or chronic diseases. And the ones that we see a lot of include um, chest diseases. Um, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is very common, um, and that clearly puts you at greater risk if you were to catch the virus. Figures out today for England and Wales show a range of death rates linked to COVID-19 between March and May. They're adjusted for differing age profiles in each area. In England, in the northeast, the figure was just over 97 per 100,000 of population. In London, the highest, it was 137 per 100,000 of population. And the lowest in England was the southwest, with just over 41. In Wales, the highest area, once again a big city, was Cardiff at 125 per 100,000 deaths. Wales as a whole, at 67, was below England. The figures show death rates in the most deprived areas were a lot higher than in the wealthiest parts of the country. In England, more than twice as high. There is a higher death rate from COVID amongst people who, for example, work in unskilled labour. And it's quite likely that there are higher proportions of people in those that in that nature work in deprived areas. Similarly, we know that actually if you're in a, an area with high population density, it's harder to do your social distancing effectively. And many of the deprived areas that we're looking at are areas of high population density. The medical director for NHS England acknowledged these were challenging issues those things that mean you are more likely to do badly when you get the infection, like diabetes, like obesity, like heart and lung disease, we see more frequently uh, in more deprived areas of the country. In Scotland and Northern Ireland, there are no comparable figures for death rates adjusted for age demographics. There'll be a lot more research on health inequalities, prevalence among BAME communities and underlying conditions. Today's figures do add a bit more to an understanding of the impact of coronavirus. Hugh Pym, BBC News. From Monday, face coverings will be mandatory on public transport in England. Transport operators will be able to refuse permission to travel to those who are not wearing a face covering, and it could lead to fines. The Transport Secretary, Grant Shapps, confirmed that new volunteers called journey makers will be deployed to remind people. Scotland's First Minister Nicola Sturgeon has insisted that a programme to test care workers for coronavirus is accelerating. So far, just over a third have been tested. That's despite a promise last month that all care home staff would get a weekly test. Our Scotland editor Sarah Smith reports. I'm just going to take your rubs, darling. All staff working in every care home in Scotland are supposed to be tested for coronavirus every week. A big promise. The big problem is that nearly four weeks after that commitment was made, only around a third of staff have been tested even once. 
At this home in Dumfries and Galloway, they've had no confirmed cases, but they've also been unable to get hold of the tests. I think it would have been beneficial for us to have been tested earlier. Um, it would have kind of put us all maybe a bit more at ease. Um, where we're further down the line now, having been closed since March, um, it's quite scary thinking that if somebody comes back with a positive test, that'll have a huge impact on the home. Across the whole of Dunfries and Galloway, only four care home staff were tested in the first week of this month. Of all the people in Scotland who have died of COVID-19, 47% of them have been in care homes. That's more than have died in hospital. And the government know that without visitors, it's staff who pose the greatest risk for bringing the virus into homes. That's why they want to test them all every week. But it's a target they've yet to meet. The charity that runs this home say they've only been able to get 5% of their Scottish staff tested compared to 90% in their homes in England. I welcome the commitment to weekly testing because that is a commitment that hasn't happened in England. But the, the, the reality has to catch up with the government position. The First Minister will not set a date for when the government might reach the testing goal. Why is the commitment to test all care home staff not been met even though it's over three weeks since it was first made and when will that promise be fulfilled? It does take time to put in place a programme of testing that number of people uh, in place and health boards have been doing that. The health secretary and I have, I think, given um, a fairly direct uh, indication over the last week or so that we think that progress should be accelerating. And that's why the, the health secretary has made that very clear to health boards. On uh, the, the, the other side of that is that we've made clear to health boards that the Scottish government is there if they need additional resources and support. The Scottish Government is working on a deal to cover sick pay for any care home workers who do test positive and have to isolate. Figures for staff testing will now be published every week, intensifying pressure to increase the tests. Sarah Smith, BBC News, Glasgow.